Welcome back. In December 2021, I showed you in a mailbag video this cute little QMC5883L 3-axis compass module. And even though it was just a mailbag video, we <laughs> actually reversed engineered the circuitry here on the module, made sure it's really 5 volt compatible so we can connect it to our run-of-the-mill Arduino, and even found a library for it ready available in the Arduino library manager. Card here, link in the description. But now it's time to go over the basics of operating such a 3-axis compass module. That is, we will have first a detailed look at that library in the Arduino library manager and what it can do with that thing. Then second, we will talk about calibrating such a compass module because they need calibration. Without calibration, they are pretty inaccurate. And we will also write some code for calibrating such a thing, of course. And third, we will have a look at an alternative library from GitHub, which is not available within the Arduino library manager, but it uh, looked promising to me. Enjoy. So let's first have a look at the library we already used in the mailbag video. That's the QMC5883L compass library you find in the Arduino library manager. And there's also a link here with more information about that library to GitHub. Now let's go over some code exploiting the functionality of the library. Of course, you have to include the library, and here comes my first criticism. You see, I don't have to include the wire object itself. The reason being, the library completely hides the wire object it is using for I2C communication. If you have other devices on your I2C bus, that's not really a good thing. You want to have access to that wire object. Then it uses a lot of control bits for a config function later on, but these bits are not defined within its .h file. So I've defined some constants for that here. Let's go over them real quick. So you have a mode which can either be standby, that is the chip does nothing, or continuous, that is the chip continuously measures the magnetic field. Then you can set the output data rate of the chip to 10 Hz, 50 Hz, 100 Hz or 200 Hz. And you have an option to set the full scale range of the measurements from the chip to 2 Gauss, plus minus 2 Gauss or plus minus 8 Gauss. And finally the chip does oversampling in its analog to digital converter and you can set the ratio here to 512, 256, or 128, or 64. Of course you have to instantiate a compass object here. And then within the setup I do a serial begin, so we can see later on something on the serial monitor. And then you have to call the init method of the class, so you can actually use your compass object. In commands here I have all the set or config methods of the class. I'm not using them right now. I just wanted to point out that the set mode, which gets all these configuration bits, is called by the init method here with the following values. So mode continuous, output data rate 200 hertz, range plus minus 8 gauss, and oversampling ratio 512. In the loop, I first have three local variables here, x, y, and z values. These are integers and they will hold the raw values measured by the chip for the three axes. The names here are a wee bit misleading as we will see in a minute, but anyway, the chip really delivers full scale integer values here. So plus minus 32,000 something. 
then we have an integer azimuth here delivered by the library that will hold the actual direction in degrees 0 to 359. Then we have a byte bearing which is just a divided down azimuth to the values 0 to 15 which represent north, 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 east, north, east, east, north, east, east and so on. The library also gives you the bearing here as a string. So we hold that in this variable and I have a buffer here which I use later on in an sprintf statement uh, to nicely format the output. The core method of the library is read and that does really the I2C communication with the chip and gets the raw values from the chip. You can then retrieve these values from the library via the get x, y and z methods. And you have also the get azimuth which calculates from the x and y value your heading in 0 to 359 degrees. And get bearing is dividing the whole thing down to that 0 to 15 value and it needs as an argument the azimuth. And get direction gives you or fills up a string you pass here and it also needs the azimuth as an argument. You have to terminate that string you get back here with a backslash zero so it's a real string that you can print out. Finally I format everything into my buffer variable with a sprintf statement and I print out the buffer to the serial port. After 200 milliseconds wait, we repeat. Now, before we have a look at the serial monitor, let's talk about these axes. And you have here on the module markings for the X axis in that direction, the Y axis in this direction and the Z axis somewhere here in the vertical. Please also note the marking here on the chip. Here's a little bit more zoomed out view so you can see the markings in relation to the whole breadboard. The thing is the three arrows do not indicate rotational axes of three different compasses inside that chip. If we have a look at the data sheet, package pin configuration, package 3D view, there is a little sentence here. Arrow indicates direction of magnetic field that generates a maximum positive output reading in normal measurement configuration yeah, for that sensor. That is if the magnetic field lines go in that direction here we get a maximum positive output on the Y sensor. If they go in that direction maximum positive output on the X sensor. And if they go in that direction here so vertically maximum output on the Z sensor. Meaning the rotational axis for the X and the Y sensor are the same. It's the vertical axis through the chip and they are just offset 90 degrees. While there is no re really a rotational axis, it's more like a rotational plane for the Z sensor. And the plane is basically the horizontal plane through the chip. Now I have here on my bench a little compass indicating the north direction and please watch now on the serial monitor the values for the Y sensor. If I align the Y sensor to the south I get the largest possible that is least negative value on the Y sensor. And if I turn that 180 degrees around I get the most negative smallest value for the Y sensor aligning that Y arrow to the south. Now the same holds true for the X axis. Now watch the X axis values. I'm aligning the X arrow to the north and I get the largest possible value approximately. And if I turn around my board again 180 degrees aligning the X arrow to the south I get the smallest possible value. And <laughs> all the time the value of the Z axis is approximately the same. However if I put that now on the edge and we are, have now 
basically the plane of the z-axis in the magnetic field and I align that to north, we get a much larger, the maximum value on the z-axis. And again, if I turn that 180 degrees, here we get the smallest value on the z-axis. And that also works if I put the breadboard on the other edge. So, because it's a plane for the z-axis, so I have here uh, the smallest possible readings. And turning it 180 degrees, I have the largest possible readings. You might also have noticed that the minimum and maximum numbers we get here for each of the sensors are not very well defined. So if I align x to the north again, we get a maximum of yeah 600 something. If I align x to the south, we get about minus 800. And for the y-axis, if I align that to north, we get yeah minus 100. If I align it to south, we get uh, minus 1500. So yeah, there's really <clears throat> no way to predict that from the specification for the sensor. And as a result, if you look at the azimuth calculated from the x and y value, these are also off. So x to the north, we get about 300 degrees, 310 degrees. And if I align x to the south, we get about 200... <laughs> 220, uh, 25 degrees. And that's the reason you need calibration. And calibration has no other meaning than determine the maximum and minimum values you get from the X, Y and Z sensor. So you can normalize the value range. As it happens, the library comes with a little example sketch called calibration. Now I won't go into the details of that sketch, I haven't wrote it, uh, but here we have a little two-dimensional array. So three for the three axes and two for a minimum and maximum value for the axis. And at the end of the script, this array of integers will be filled with the minimum and maximum values for each axis. And we have some initialization stuff here uh, in setup with serial and compass in it. We already saw that. And then we go into the loop where we, yeah, do measurements or get the values for x, y, and z from the sensor. And each time we get new values, we uh, determine the minimum and maximum on each axis. And yeah, this is a little bit uh, meh here, the code. But anyway, if we haven't a change in the minimum or maximums over a duration of five seconds, 5,000 milliseconds, then we are finished with our calibration and it will print out the data directly as a set calibration statement for the sensor. So let me upload that uh, stuff to the Arduino and um, then we calibrate. Okay, <clears throat> calibrating, calibrating, and I'm moving the sensor, I'm moving it in all possible directions. And yeah, around, around we go. And we're done. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, this is the important line down here. Compass set calibration, da, 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 da. Okay, I will copy that over into my own code now. And I have to admit, I made some changes to that calibration script here. So first I initialize that array here, okay, with the maximum and minimum integer ranges. So 
yeah the max min down below really works and i also changed my millis timestamps here from integer to unsigned long i also initialized the one timestamp here and my <coughs> sorry serial is now one megabout and i wait here a full 10 seconds of no changes in the readings and until i say uh Calibration is finished. Okay, enough about that calibration script. So I've inserted that set calibration line here inside the setup function of my code. I'll upload it and then we'll see if the compass is calibrated. And indeed, if I align now here my board to north, we are actually at north. And if I align my board to south, sorry, uh, that's not quite easy. We are pointing at south. Great. Uh, so you see, uh, it's really important to calibrate that thing so it really works properly. Without calibration, uh, your measurements will be all over the place. I told you in the intro that I found an alternative library to that QMC5. 8.8.3L compass library available within the Arduino library manager. Uh, meanwhile, I found a total of five alternative libraries here on GitHub. However, uh, none of these libraries supports calibrating your QMC 5.8.8.3L. So it really doesn't make sense to write example code for them and try them out. Instead, I want to go over their header files uh, to see what maybe they do better than the QMC 5883L compass library we used so far. First off, we have the Mecha QMC 5883L library from Keep Working. And that library actually <laughs> defines uh, the values for the different chip options, which is good. Otherwise, it's pretty rudimentary. You have also a set address like in the other I library uh, in it, a set mode, a soft reset, and then several read methods here, some just for the raw sensor values and some also delivered uh, integer azimuth and a float azimuth. And you have also uh, azimuth calculation functions from two of the values, which will usually always be x and y. Next, we have the QMC5883 from Timpur. That library goes a step further because it defines real type defs here for the different options the chip has. The constructor gets, in this case, the I2C address of the chip. Yeah, with a default, of course. We also have a begin and we have two core function here, read raw and read normalize. I guess raw returns you in the vector the raw integer values of the three axis sensors and read normalize will return you values between minus one and one. We also have a read heading uh, with where you, we can give an offset and we can invert it and a convert heading. I'm not quite sure what the difference is, but bottom line, uh, no real calibration. We can give you an offset for all three axes, but uh, not really minimum maximum values. And the set option method of the other libraries is here split into four methods for data rate, range, samples, and mode. We can also activate or deactivate the output, interrupt output pin of the chip. Uh, yeah, go back to the mailbag video. It can give a little pulse on one pin every time it has new data available. And why that set rollover is public here, I have no idea. That's really uh, I squared C protocol stuff of that chip. Hmm. 
the QMC5883 L library from Diusk does not define here any defines or type devs for your chips options, but it obviously <laughs> contains a full calibration matrix. So I lied. That thing can obviously do calibration. It's called here uh, do adjust. That's a private function. I guess when you do a begin with enable adjust, it will go through that calibration procedure somehow. Uh, you can also begin while giving three constants here, integer constants for x, y, and z. I don't know why. You get back the raw magnetic field values. You get the direction, of course, calculated from the x and y value. And that's new. You get the temperature. Yes, that chip also contains a little temperature sensor. No other library so far reads that temperature out. Nice touch. The QMC5883 library from GC Mike is very rudimentary, so no constants here. And <laughs> yeah, that's it basically. Yeah, your constructor begin and calculate, and you can get the x, y, and z raw values from the sensor. And it also gives you a heading and a heading in degrees. Uh, that's it. Finally, we have the QMC5883L Arduino from Michoni 99. And that library again has at least the finds here for the different configuration options of the chip. And it also defines two structs. One with three integer values x, y, z for the raw data delivered from the chip. And one with three float values probably scaled between minus one and one and it only has well a constructor which gets passed uh, the reference to a wire object so very good wire object stays exposed if you want to use it with another device and you have here three methods to set the measure mode, the sampling rate, and the scale. And you have two methods here to read the raw integer data and one uh, which delivers you the scaled flow data. That's it. I put links to all the libraries in the description, by the way. That's it for today. I guess we have our work cut out for two or three the details videos. First of all, I want to write my own library for that little thingy there because, yeah, the first library it works, but uh, it has, as I mentioned, some details that irk me. Besides, we already programmed raw communication using the SPI library and the one li uh, wire library, but never used the two wire, that is I squared C library, to directly communicate with the chip. So that's a good opportunity to do that. Then we will have to talk about math and geometry. Uh, because I already said you calculate your direction from the x and y value the chip delivers here, but I didn't explain how. And the keyword here is trigonometry. Yeah, uh, scary, but um, I think we'll have to dive into that too. And finally, I mentioned it in that video and in the mailbag, uh, there's an interrupt pin here, which delivers an interrupt signal, which we can use to actually Paul interrupt driven the data delivered by the chip. No more, uh, you know, wait 200 milliseconds or stuff like that. So, till next time, bye.